Ah, so today's project, which is uh, bought as part of a, a bulk lot of stereo equipment. So this is a Marantz SD240, um, logic controlled. Uh, I'll power it up in a second, but it came uh, for 30 bucks. Basically, I got this amp, broken buttons, but they're there. I'm just going to fit them back on. Um, got a turntable and a digital PLL synthesized tuner. That all works. It needs a bit of a CO spray. It's uh, the contacts are a bit dodgy, um, but I'll see if I replace my garage stereo or this other mediocre collection uh, with that one. But I doubt it. I think that'll just go in the for sale pile. But the belts on this one are absolutely knackered. You can see in here the remnants, this horrible thick, greasy paste that are the old belts, and you can see that this one is also stuffed so I'm going to do a um, going to try and do a belt replacement so I've got uh, power uh, got live powder here it's going to make sure this thing powers up but there we go got some signs of life here now at the moment I've got to be careful all these uh, this is all live with 240 of course so be really careful if you're tinkering around in the back here so what I'm looking for is I'm just going to press the play like that and I can hear that You probably hear that. So this drive motor, which will be probably 12 volts, um, it is live, which means that it should be a simple replacement. I just need to be able to get this mechanism apart so that I can get a new belt on there. Now, what do I use for belts? I don't. So you can see the stuff belt there. I don't use a proper belt kit because I'm a bit lazy, and they're really expensive, like 40 bucks more than the cost of the tape deck from 1982. I just use a collection of old poster rubber bands because they actually work really well. They're flat and you get them in all shapes and sizes. They're flexible enough but they've got good good K factor, good good um, good springiness. They last well and basically um, they're cheap, which suits. So the first thing you do if you're doing any kind of work, make sure your, uh, your power is disconnected so that's a, a physical indication that you don't have any live voltage um, on, your, um, on your terminals of your transformer there. So Basically, the um, first thing to do is to take some photos. Phones are perfect for this. Make sure that you know how everything comes apart. So the first thing is to pull off this spring mechanism um, in here. And I'll do that. And then this whole mechanism slides forward. And I'm going to see if I can basically unplug as few components as possible uh, to work to be able to get access into the back here. And I'm also, I've got to clean off this, this gunk here and you can see the residue it leaves on your fingers. It's literally like black tar, the residue of the old belt. I've already tried to clean it off a fair bit already and I've got a little bit more to go. So just to illustrate, this is a remnant of the old belt and look at what it's like. So it's just like this horrible, greasy tar, just revolting. Anyway, so that's, um, that's what I've got to pull off. So what you'll find is that these connections here, you can lever them out of the board. Like that. So I know you block that, but just that pulls out pretty easily. And things like this one, they just clip out and just successfully go through and loosen off anything that you can. So this one comes out as well. So this is just to illustrate how to pop one of these off. So just quickly, uh, quickly, gently get the screwdriver, lift up the bottom catch like that, and you can see all the exposed wires. And then I'm just going to gently lever all of these out. And obviously you don't want to bend any of these pins because then they won't go back in the right way, will they? So there we go. We've pretty much got this whole board decoupled now, um, and I should be able to just gently slide the front of this off and and what I tend to do ah here we go I missed one now someone who's an expert on this might say ah oh, you don't need to pull the whole thing off but I don't know that so I'm I'm gonna give it a gonna do it anyway there we go push not pull Now these are connected, there's a little push, 
There we go, that one's loose. And one more. So once that one's off, the whole thing will, will come off. Now this one has proven quite challenging to get out. So what I've done is I've cut a very thin sliver of metal and I've basically, I'm going to use it to wedge in underneath and then get that out. So you can see that that is quite a challenge because it's on an angle and it's just hard to to get enough leverage in on that to um, to pull this plug off. But anyway, it's off now and I can basically remove the whole front of the the whole front of the tape deck and now I can see how to get in to these belts and I think I might have to physically remove um, remove this 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 motor holding plate and so I can get a, a belt on and also I can feel that that's quite tacky and and I really need to clean up this um, this flywheel so it's this flywheel that's quite heavy that gives the um, gives the tape deck uh, the lowest wow and flutter uh, possible so the next step I've just got a cloth and I've just rubbed it in a little bit of um, I'm actually using uh, terps just to clean off this flywheel just rotate it around just successively just to try and get all of the gunk off the flywheel so I've had a pretty good go it's looking pretty good and you can see that if I actually rotate it up the other way you can still see remnants here we go of the rubber band the um, the, the tape counter drive um, you can still see remnants of it. Now I don't have a tape path, there's no tape path available uh, on YouTube for this particular deck so I'm gonna have to surmise that it goes around this one, around this one and around the flywheel and I'll just use a rubber band uh, under reasonable tension and that'll be the, the, uh, the tape drive for the tape counter. So the next step is to get this backing plate off. Now I can see a screw under here I can see screws down the side there um, and there's one down there so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to have to take off this bottom plate here um, and I'm getting and there's screws there and down there so I've got to take the bottom off and then I can take the back off and there's obviously a little little retaining clip in there um, if I pinch that the flywheel doesn't really move, so that's that's not enough just to remove this little clip. Um, I've got to take this whole backing plate off, which is just more work. So I've taken off one, two, three, four screws. The whole thing is popped off. Um, the little eject mechanism, the cassette holding holder is quite loose now, so basically these are retained by this chassis frame so anyway the whole thing's off now I should be able to pop this open relatively easy easily and I change the belts I also had to make sure that I took off this tape drive belt here which just goes onto the back of this little wheel so all of that will be done in reverse if this belt is okay I'll keep it just give it a bit of a tug just to see if it's still got any spring left in it but the next step is um, I'm going to undo this little screw down the bottom here. Oh, God, that's tight. So you need some fairly high-precision screwdrivers to get some of these screws out. And the other thing that I've done is whenever I do a job like this, I make, see, I've got top case and then bottom case. So I've made actually notes about where all the screws go because... You know, when you're old like me, your memory goes a bit wonky and you just can't remember where everything goes when you have to put everything back together. So that's not enough. There's going to be more of them, so I'm going to have to do these ones as well. Okay, so I've got the screws out of here. I've got the screws out of here. And I'm going to gently pinch this little ferrule retainer and see if that shaft pops out. Looks like it does. Come on, how'd you come? So it feels like it wants to come out. I might just need to have a look here. Ah, 
Okay, so okay, there's a there's a spring in there you can just see. And God, these tape decks, no wonder they went out of business. So bloody complicated. Okay, so that's probably gonna be my best bet. All I need to do is pull this out of the way. Just gonna use tweezers to pull this. Again, I've got to remember where all this goes, and then I have to um, make sure everything's clean and put some belts on. I have managed to wiggle this out, and you can still see a remnant of belt here. And I'm just going to gently, with a pair of tweezers, pull this out, and it is just turning into black soup. So I'm actually going to use a screwdriver just to go into the groove. So this is what happens to these belts, they just turn into absolute mush. I'm going to, have to spend some time just cleaning up, cleaning up this groove. A little bit more metho, a bit more terps, whatever. Anything you've got. IPA, it's isopropyl alcohol. Two stroke will probably do the trick actually. So I've got a, I've just picked a rubber band that I think looks about right. I know it has to go around the back of this. Pick that up. There we go. So, yep, that looks like it's working okay. Now, there's a bit of a twist in this belt, and you can see that it's picking up some of the black tar from the old belt. So I'll just play around with it, get that old, um, get the twist out of the out of the rubber band, and see if I can clean up that belt a little bit more. The motor is decoupled mechanically from here, so I've got to align, got to get a, a rubber, got to size up a, up a belt, and then put it, uh, loop it over that, uh, loop it over the um, the motor shaft when it's in situ. Now sizing up a belt uh, for the main drive is a little bit of suck it and see. These are good old Aussie post rubber bands but that one's just going to be that's going to be too loose so I need to find one that's a little bit uh, tighter than that. Probably prefer to go too tight than too loose. All I really want to do is be able to pull the tension on this get it round there. Okay so after a fair bit of fluffing around I've managed to get the belt on and it rotates, so I've got to squeeze this um, little ferrule and spring mechanism. Push it through. Come on. I can just see it poking through. All right, got it. Just pop that through. You can just see the spring on the back there. And now this, I can try and get this whole mechanism to go together. I think I've got all this back together. Uh, I actually worked out that these screws down here which hold the cassette door in place uh, you actually don't need to unscrew those so leave those screwed in um, if you can see them and it'll make your job a bit easier reassembling so basically um, it's got a nice flat surface to, to try and work with and I'm just going to slide this back in place this is the little shaft that connects onto the eject mechanism, so that goes on there. That has to slide into the reciprocal uh, ferrule uh, guide on the cassette, and it's all a bit of stuffing around, and I'll probably make 10 bucks on this thing, so what a waste of time, but, you know, it's a bit of fun. All right. So that's basically how it all goes back together, and I just need to now screw this back together. So I'll do that and just make sure all the buttons work, as in all the mechanical interlocks, the eject and that sort of thing. Then I'll power it up and make sure uh, the belts all turn. Of course, don't forget, as I almost did, to put on any spare belts. So this is the this little capstan, that, um, just the, the tape counter belt. So I've got to put that on to the first gear capstan wheel and then slide the whole thing together. Right there, now it's time for the great reassembly. So we've got our two pieces that have to marry together. Okay, yeah, the cosmetics of this one aren't too bad. A couple of, couple of face plate scratches, a couple of chips. Um, but it's that beautiful, beautiful early 80s Marantz gold. That's kind of what attracted me when I paid $36 for this. So I uh, just need to make sure that everything all the cables are clear. Bend that capacitor out of the way. 
um, and make sure with all these pins that they've been straightened out because if they're bent like this one here they're not going to go back in easily so you've got to make sure that they're straight and that they're going to slide back in to their little recess because if one of those pins doesn't contact eh, it's not going to work so let's have a bit of a fiddle with this and try and get this to go together and it's got to plug it all back together and kick it in the gut so using my little cheat sheet of uh, which goes where um, basically screw this back together now when you're working with plastic a trick is and I just did it on this one I'll just do it again basically what you do is rotate it counterclockwise until it jumps you heard that and then you know that you set it in the thread otherwise with plastic you run the real risk of cross threading we'll probably get away with it a couple of times but you really don't want to compromise these things lucky last you can see look at all this black crap on my fingers from the belt and the problem is you can't get it off um, it's very very hard to get off uh, get off things now just check so the eject works um, this spring in here just put that up at an angle so the way that this one works is that comes around and that has to go inside like that like that there we go a fair bit of tension on that old fella um, but that's that's the way it all goes together and so just comes the process of reassembling everything generally obviously refer to your, your photos and your video uh, when you're putting all this back together so that everything goes in the back spot but you'll tend to find that you know this clearly has to go in there so they tend to sit at a natural position because you know these these uh, software engineers and that, that built these things in the 70s and 80s were as economical as they could be with wire lengths pretty sure that's all good so and that resistor out of the way now you can tell any resistor that's got long legs on it is designed to get hot so now you can do a smoke test power this thing up and see how we go all right so back to this tape deck uh, we've got power got live don't want to touch that and you can see here my dodgy little belts at the back here so and those belts are working absolutely beautifully so the tracking's good there's no noise tension's good um, so basically these are an absolutely perfect solution to a cassette player belt problem the only thing is you just got to um, watch the belt tensions uh, make sure that all of the belts go back on I've, I forgot this one quite a few times so that's the the belt counter um, rubber band and then you have it the only thing wrong with this one is for some reason the VU meter is not working but that's nothing to do with the belts so it's all good Dolby B how about that so everything works pause yep everything but the VU meters it's probably one of the uh, the plugs at the back here anyway successful fix